Welcome to Mysteries, Myths, and Legends. I'm Taylor. I'm Savannah. And welcome to the show. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Happy Pride Month. Happy Pride Month. We love Pride Month. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Time to celebrate. Yes. You know, um, love who you want to love out there. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I don't know if you can hear. Can you hear the cat scratching at the door? <laughs> <laughs> no. Update, guys. Parm wants in. She wants to be <laughs> our new social media manager. And, you know, we told her at her age of one, nearly, roughing around, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. you know, she's just a yes, little it under. Yes, it's, it, it's her birthday month. It's her birth month, I know. Mm-hmm. So, But being only one, she's a little underqualified. That's true, know? that's true. But she is scratching at the door. Um, so I hope that doesn't distract anyone. It's definitely distracting me a little bit, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hopefully she'll go away. <laughs> disregard for now, you know. If, yeah. if you hear Parm, just say hi, Parm. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I'm sure she'll get tired of it eventually, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, anyways, last week we told you that it was going to be Memorial Day. Yes. Um, And it surely was Memorial Day. I took a little trip to Atlanta, Georgia. And, you know, they say that traffic in Atlanta is pretty bad. Honestly, traffic was not bad at all in Atlanta for me personally. However... Gaffney, South Carolina will forever be my enemy because that's where the traffic was. And it was such bad traffic that we, we were like completely stopped for two hours on the highway. Oh, no. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. I got so sunburnt from sitting in my car. Like my arm is actually peeling my forearm oh my God. from like, you know, because, you know, when you stop on the highway, you got to roll down the windows. It was sunny, beautiful. You know, that's just the vibe when you're stuck in traffic. So, yes. You know, I have beef with South Carolina traffic more than Atlanta traffic. But oh, really? Wow. Yeah. At least in this ex- experience, yeah. Hmm. Mm-hmm. It wasn't bad at all. But I went to the um, <clears throat> the world of Coca-Cola because if you didn't know, Coca-Cola was made in Atlanta, which I did not know that. I didn't know that either. Wait. It huh. makes sense. That's why the um, museum was there. But yeah, I did not know that. Yeah. Hmm. Um, well, that's cool. It was really cool. And we got to taste so many different kinds of Coke and like other Coke products from like all around the world. It was so cool. Some of them were really good and some of them were absolutely disgusting. Oh, <laughs> and then you can literally stand there all day long and drink soda if you wanted to. And oh. we drank so much soda that we were like <laughs> on the verge of throwing up. Oh my God. As no. we left. Because <laughs> also we had to walk pretty far to our car. So we're just like, walking as all of this mix of soda is like oh, slushing yeah. around in oh our my God. stomachs <laughs> <laughs> but it was very cool in there and then i also went to the georgia aquarium which is the biggest aquarium in the united states and the third biggest aquarium in the world and oh wow hmm. i may or may not have hidden some mysteries myths and legends stickers there so Ooh. try to go find them guys They are there. But that aquarium was unlike anything I've ever seen. I got to see my very first whale. Never in my life have I seen a whale until... Really? I got to see two whales. Two different kinds. I saw saw some whales in the wild before. That's so cool. But, yeah. I want to see a freaking... I didn't know they had whales up this aquarium. Yes, they have whales. Oh, it was so cool. And we saw this dolphin show. And that was unreal. Guys, I wish I could have just, like... I wish I could take my memory out of my head and play it for you guys. The things that those dolphins are so smart. We know this, but like, guys, the dolphins were doing tricks I could not even do. <laughs> my own personal <laughs> self. Like, they were jumping like 30 feet out of the water and like grabbing, like hitting these balls that were like attached to the ceiling. Mm-hmm. It was crazy. It really was crazy. And they were like, videos and photos are absolutely prohibited. Oh, and I was okay. like, oh, why? But I, you know, may or may not have snuck a video. So oh. I'll send it to you, Savannah. Okay. <laughs> I want to see. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that was, that was my Memorial Day weekend. It was very fun. Wow. Mine was boring. but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's fun too, though. Um, yeah. So my Memorial Day weekend, yours, like, 
you just had so much going on and like it sounds so much fun but um see like I was stuck in North Carolina still and North Carolina like I'm pretty sure it was like the only state on the coast that got like rain the whole weekend Mm -hmm. it was rainy and like super cold just like I said before I said like that was in the forecast yeah Yeah, it happened (laughs) um and I didn't get to go swimming or anything (laughs) but we did um cook some food so um my family like we just ate a bunch of food so that was cool i mean honestly that's yeah that's an amazing time in and of itself yeah yeah yep well um love that and for future plans so for what you guys can expect to come next week um on the podcast savannah's coming this weekend like we record early so you know time time doesn't really exist here as you're listening but um yeah you're coming to see me yes we'll be getting into some kind of shenanigans while we're Mm -hmm. here in wilmington Mm -hmm. maybe we'll see willie yeah listen to our last episode if you don't know who willie is yeah that'd be cool Mm -hmm. so you know look forward to that next week yes but um other than that rate and review us on apple Podcasts and spotify please but Mm -hmm. how about we jump right on into your story savannah Okay. Yeah, we can do that. Um, I do want to mention though. So I don't know if you heard this. We're, we're taking it back a few minutes to when you were telling your story about, um, your weekend. My phone like went off a few times. I just want to like let anybody listening out there know that if they heard that they weren't just like going crazy. My phone, (laughs) I accidentally forgot to turn off the, that's funny. (laughs) Turn on silent. So if you heard that, yeah, um, that was my phone. <laughs> we like, anyways. No, we should have pranked them <laughs> to think that, like, they got a notification. I know. I wasn't going to say anything because I was like, it's already been so long. I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> but I was like, no, I have to. It's bothering me. That's so, so funny because actually, now that, did you, did you, now hear that it? you say that, I did hear it, but I oh, thought okay. it was my roommate. Like, well, because <laughs> like, she was, like, walking by and I was like, it was just probably yeah. my phone. No, that was me. Well, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, I hope we I hope we prank some of our listeners there. I know. Uh, okay, so my story this week. Um, so this week I have like this story that is a very old legend or you know tale. Oh. Um, that I, you know, I always wanted to learn more about, and that's that's what I did. Because I didn't really know anything about it before. And this is the legend of Excalibur. No way. And oh my gosh. King Arthur. Oh, a little I'm bit. so excited. So, do you know much about King Arthur? I, yeah, I know a lot about oh, King Arthur. Oh, see, I literally knew nothing. Um, I knew, like, yeah, literally nothing. Yeah, it, like, King Arthur, for some reason, was, like, one of my hyper fixations, like, in elementary school. Oh, okay. Okay. I was, like... So- there you go. Very much so into like his life, so I'm excited. Did you ever um did you ever watch the show Merlin? Yes, I did. Wow, throw back. I had honestly forgot. See, I <laughs> always wanted show. to watch that show because it was like popular. Mm-hmm. Um I don't know and, if like, I watched it like religiously, but my my mom watched it and I would like sit in with like most episodes. So I knew yeah. what was going on. Yeah, it was definitely one of those, like, big shows when, like, Tumblr was big. Mm-hmm. Uh, throw <laughs> so I'm taking it back. back. Wow. Yeah, I, but I didn't watch that, so I was literally, So like, you were just really out of the loop. On yes, exactly. So it's all like, I, need to, I needed to get into it. So some of this stuff, you might be like, obviously, like, everybody knows <laughs> this, but I'm like, yeah. I didn't know it. So. I mean, no, <laughs> I never think everybody knows it, you know. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so... Okay, so King Arthur, um, historians actually can't prove that King Arthur existed. So, like, he himself is a a myth. A a mystery, myth, and legend all in one. Yes. Um, He could have been a real warrior from the 6th century. Or, like, the character could have been based on a real person. But it's just, like, there's no way to prove that he was real, I guess. So... Yeah. Um, and let's let's sort of like take it back a little bit. Um, there's this thing called the Matter of Britain. Do you know what that is? Nope. 
Okay. So this is medieval literature. Oh. <laughs> and like legendary material that's associated with Britain. Um, it's associated with Great Britain and something like a place that used to exist called Brittany. Oh. Which is Brittany also. Spears. Yes, yeah, literally it's spelled Brittany. <laughs> like that. the name. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. I, I read that. I was like, what? I have never heard of that place ever existing. I was like, and people are called that now? Like, <laughs> <laughs> For real. Which you came first? The Brittany or the Brittany? Yeah. Um, but And it's also, Brittany is also called Little Britain. So that's cool. Um, and it's also, it's now part of France. So it, it doesn't exist anymore because France kind of took it. Mm, interesting. Um, so anyways, the matter of Britain... Um, has like these legendary heroes in it and the biggest hero in it is King Arthur so that's sort of where he comes from and it is also one of the three great western story cycles in medieval literature which I didn't even really realize were a thing um, but there is the matter of Britain with like King Arthur and stuff the matter of France with um, Charlemagne and the matter of Rome, which would be like cl- classical mythology. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so all of these together are sort of like the groupings of like medieval myths and stuff, old old um, legends. That's really cool. So yeah, I know. I see. Like, I always find stuff like this. And I'm like, I need to get deeper into that. Because I'm interested. For real. See, like, I always, like, I know at the beginning of the podcast, I kept bop them in the podcast. I would say I hated history. And it's not that I hated history. I love, obviously, I love history. We talk about history every single episode. But only when it's interesting like this, you know? Yes. Like, only the specific things. Like, memorizing dates and stuff. I exactly. hate that. Like, in school, like, they're just no. like, everybody needs to know all these dates. I'm like, these yeah. numbers mean nothing I to could me. never. I never did. <laughs> but tell me about some, like, Greek mythology or, like, King Arthur. I'm down. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, anyways, uh, King Arthur is the main focus of the matter of Britain, like I said. And he is in Welsh stories portrayed as, like, the leader of the Britons and in um, in battles against Anglo-Saxon invaders. So, I guess um, in these stories, it was basically, like, the Brits who were um, part of the Roman Empire, sort of, against the Anglo-Saxons. And then... The Brits sort of won, and that's why it's Britain now. So, that's that. Um, which is, like, crazy. Like, they have lore on, like, how their country started, and yeah, it's, like, a legend. That's, that's real tea right there. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Uh, so, Arthur became popular through the popularity of this, like, work of um, literature um, called the Historia Regum Britanni, which translates to History of the Kings of Britain, and that was by Geoffrey of Monmouth. And that's another thing. People used to be called, like, Geoffrey of Monmouth. It's like, I think it's Monmouth, first Monmouth. of all. Monmouth. Sorry. Okay. I was, that's like, sorry. <laughs> I could be wrong, but I think that might be the one thing I no, actually, actually know how to you're pronounce. Right. But, but anyways. I know. I'm they're just, like of the place. Like, can you imagine being like Taylor of Winston-Salem? Yes. That's exactly, horrible. Exactly. <laughs> but, and then it's like, what if you move? Are you still that person? Yeah. That's a great question. <laughs> and like the fact that there's so little people that you can just say like, oh, Savannah of Winston. And it's yeah. like, like, oh, yeah, I know who know, that is. Yeah. You know exactly who that is. <laughs> Uh, so, so yeah. Um, in his, in, in this story, the, um, the history of the kings of Britain, he depicts Arthur as, like, the king of Britain who defeated the Saxons and established Britain as an empire. So he's basically, like, the founder of the country. Yeah. In a way. Um, and this is, like, the most popular rendition of King Arthur, and it's him with, like, the magician Merlin, um, Arthur's wife, um, Guinevere. 
Is, am I saying that right? Yeah, that's Maybe. right. That's okay. right. Um, and, of course, the sword Excalibur. And another famous work was um, Robert um, de Baron, Robert de Baron's French poem uh, Merlin. And this was the first to mention the sword in the stone. And it's from uh, 1200. <laughs> so wow. Throwing old. it way back. Mm -hmm, mm hmm so yes so Excalibur this is one of if not like the most famous uh mm -hmm. sword for sure I want it so bad <laughs> do you yeah can you imagine can you imagine owning like the Excalibur that I mean it would be really Ooh, cool so cool but like what would I do with it Hanging up on the wall, obviously, for everyone to see. <laughs> but, like, people aren't just, like, going out and fighting anymore. Yeah, good. I don't want to break it, you know. <laughs> I guess, yeah. <laughs> so, um, I have a list here of all of the cool things that Excalibur, like, all the powers it has. So, um, so, yeah, let me just tell you. The sword, it has the ability to kill anyone. <laughs> Love that. Including gods, immortals, mm -hmm. and spirits, somehow. Ghosties? No Which one's like, safe with Excalibur. Yeah, like, how does it kill ghosts when it's like, aren't you already gone? I don't know. Maybe it, like, kills their soul. Yeah, like, it says, well, it, it said spirit, not ghost, so I guess. But, like, that's the same thing. Yeah, it is. I don't know. If you round. It, it like, just gets them gone. <laughs> Yeah. Um, it also has healing abilities. Um, and it is virtually indestructible. Um, but it can be damaged and pieces can be removed. Um, and another big thing is that when somebody is holding the sword, the person is invincible. And it has, like, this scabbard on it. Um, that makes the person that's using the sword incapable of being wounded or of receiving any injury. A safety shield. We love yeah, that. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. It so, yeah, like so magical. Yeah, like listing all of that stuff, I'm like, maybe I do want Excalibur. That's what like, I'm saying. Cool. You can't lose having Excalibur. Yeah. I mean, in a way, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so... The story, like, the main story, of course, would be the sword in the stone, right? Of course. Uh, so this story goes that a sword in a stone um, <laughs> appeared in a churchyard on Christmas Eve. Just, like, randomly. So magical. Thanks, Santa. Yeah. And Merlin, the magician, he said that the sword could only be taken from the stone by the true king of England. Um, like, whoever was the son of the, like, previous king. Because I guess they didn't know who the true heir was, so. Um, and there's also another version of the story that says that Merlin was the one to put the sword in the stone. But some say that, like, it just appeared there, mm -hmm. so yeah. I don't know. Either I think way. I've heard of the one, like, that he puts it in there. Okay, yeah. But, I mean... Who knows? Who's to say? Yeah, I don't know. Um, so, you know, this happens, and obviously many people start to gather around. So they're like, what's going on? Um, and they all try to pull the sword from the stone, and everybody fails. Nobody can do it. And then this teenager named Arthur comes along, and he didn't really know what was going on. <laughs> Me. Arthur is really me. Yeah, he didn't really know what was going on, and people had started to, like, walk away at this point, and, like, nobody was paying attention, right? So he goes over, and he just, like, goes to take the sword, and he, like, pulls it out, and he's, like, just pulls it out casually with no effort, and then he's, <laughs> like, oh, um, I'm just gonna put this back. He puts it back, nobody sees him take it. <laughs> oh, Arthur, come on. So then, and then he just, like, walks away. But then, um, and, like, he doesn't realize, like, what any of this means. Yeah. He's like, yeah. So then, later, he goes back to the stone, 
like once he sort of finds out like what this could mean for him he goes back and this time people are watching and he pulls it out again and everybody's like what oh my god <laughs> like he he just pulled the sword out of the stone mm -hmm. like we all tried it obviously like it's stuck in there how did he do this yeah um and then um merlin announces him as the true king dun, dun, dun. So, so there's that and in this story funny enough the sword is not actually named at all mm -hmm. and it is connected back through like another story um where like arthur has a sword named excalibur but in this story specifically it doesn't name it but people always like connect it back so yeah. so i don't know i mean it could have been a different sword altogether we don't know <laughs> interesting mm -hmm. so that's that story um is that like the main one that you know of Taylor? yeah definitely definitely because you were saying that you like got a deep dive into king arthur yeah but that was in middle school so like do i remember no oh, okay i was gonna say like do you know more than me or no, that's definitely <laughs> the story i knew and i thought he had something to do with like the holy grail too though maybe not though Okay, yes, he does, but I did not cover that, actually. Okay, well, that's Cause there's, fine. <laughs> there's a lot to do with King Arthur, so I, I only sort of took some of the stuff with Excalibur. So. Mm -hmm, for sure. Well, maybe King Arthur Part 2, because, I mean, he's got a lot going on. Yeah, we might have to revisit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there is a second story about Excalibur that I'm going to tell you. Um, in this other one, Arthur gets the sword at a magical lake. Oh, so he's at this lake, and the um, the lady of the lake gives it to him. <laughs> the lady of the lake. Oh, mm -hmm. have you seen the haunting of? I forgot what it's called. By Manor. The, uh, no. Or is it Hill House? I don't know. One of them. It, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> is there a lady of the lake there? Yep. I guess so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure is. Okay. Um. Well, anyways, the Lady of the Lake gives it to him. He takes it from a hand that was rising out of the lake. So, uh, if you imagine that. I can. <laughs> I can also say I don't know if I'd grab something from a hand that was rising out of the lake. But that, that's just me. Yeah. Well, he did. He did. Um, and the sword is named Excalibur. And Excalibur actually means to cut steel. I was wondering if you knew what that meant, because that's, like, a really cool name. Mm-hmm. Cool word. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know if it's a direct translation, but it's, like, you know, that's general. That's pretty much what it means, like, to cut mm -hmm. steel. Like, it can cut through things. So. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, so, this sword was said to be made, um, made from an elf in Avalon. So that's cool, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, okay, and cool. yeah, and after he gets this sword, Arthur um, agrees to a peace treaty with um, King Lot and some other rebel kings. So I guess they were like, you know, sort of fighting before, but he's like, let's just come to an agreement. Um, and of course, right after this, <laughs> which is kind of funny. He goes and um, meets up with King Lot's wife, <laughs> T, uh, named uh, Morgos. I'm pretty sure that's how you say her name. Um, so she, he goes up with Morgos and uh, sleeps with her. Mm, T. <laughs> so that's cool. I feel like all of these old stories have this kind of stuff going oh, on. Oh, always. <laughs> I mean, there weren't that many people around, like we just said. There's not enough, like, drama. Like, this was the, the tea, you know? Exactly. They had to do something to create some kind of talk around the town. Exactly, exactly. So, so yes, that happens. And they have a child together. Oh. A boy. The tea. Oh, you said a baby boy. Yes. The tea is boiling over. Yes. At this oh, point. it'll get even crazier. Um, a, this is a boy named Mordred. And later, 
Merlin, the the wizard, uh, not the wizard, the magician, he says to Arthur, he's like, you probably should not have done that. Um, because, <laughs> because later, um, I don't really know how much later, it could have been like years later or something, Arthur learns that King Lot's wife, Morgoth, was Arthur's half-sister. Oh my god. I like ruined that with my stuttering, but... (laughs) You know, it's okay. I still knew what you were trying to say, and it's not good. Yes, yes. It is not good. Arthur's half-sister. Arthur, baby, you are making a mistake. uh Wait, a child. Oh, Yes, yes. So the child is a product... Of incest. I'm so sorry. What's his name again? It's I kind of hate it. Um, Mordred. Mordred. Yeah, Mordred. Mm, okay. So. Wow. Um. So yes, Merlin, the magician, he prophesied that Mordred would one day mortally wound his father, and bring down, like the downfall of the whole kingdom. Oh. Oh. Wow. Okay. Um. Yeah. So he's like evil totally evil and arthur also he he has another half sister that he like already knew about and she hates him (laughs) (laughs) his relationships with his um sisters not too great can't yeah not great not great um and her name is morgan lee fay and she um, you know how I said before that Excalibur had, like, this protective scabbard? Mm-hmm. Like, a healing, magical, yeah. yeah, scabbard on it? She steals that. Oh. Yeah, That's she steals it off that of, part of it? Excalibur, yes. So, basically, that part was um, the part that made him invincible, right? Mm-hmm. Got it. So, so yeah, this is very bad. Um, he becomes vulnerable Mm -hmm. during battle. And, you know, this prophecy that Merlin predicted, um, it starts to happen. Yikes. (laughs) Um, Mordred, he, like, brings his whole army on uh, Arthur, and he has Excalibur to defend himself and, like, his whole army behind him. But, you know, Excalibur does not have the magical scabbard on it. Mm -hmm. So, unfortunately, Arthur gets injured. No, Arthur, no. Just like Merlin predicted. And he lies very injured on the battlefield. Um, And then he he asks one of his men, um, Sir Bedivere, um, I'm probably saying that wrong too. Sounds right to me. Okay, okay. (laughs) He asked him to throw the sword back into the lake to return it back to the magical lake. Mm -hmm. And, um, he goes, he's like, oh yeah, sure, sure, Arthur, I'll, I'll do that. And then he takes it. He's like, I don't want to get rid of this Duh, like, this sword is what? amazing obviously yeah so he kind of like pretends to do it and he goes back and he's like okay arthur i put it in there and <laughs> arthur asks he's like okay well what did you see when you threw it in there and he's like um it just like went into the water i don't know <laughs> <laughs> and then arthur was like dude like you did not put it in the like i know you didn't put it in the lake go throw it in there <laughs> So he goes back and pretends again. He's like, I'm not doing it. He pretends again. And then Arthur's like, no, seriously. So what did you see when you threw it in there? He said, I I don't know. Like, he doesn't know (laughs) what to say. And he's like, okay, like, really throw it in the lake. And then he finally did a third time. On the third time, he goes and throws the sword into the lake. And a hand pops up from the water Uh -uh. and grabs it. Uh Uh-uh. Yes. And that is what Arthur was looking for. He comes back and says that, and he's like, okay, thank you. (laughs) Jesus, what? So, so yeah, so, Mm. yeah, that's what happened to Excalibur. It's in a a lake. Yeah. I knew it was, you know, lost. Um, Yeah. That's crazy. That reminds me. Of a movie that I just went and saw, Evil Dead Rise. 
Oh. If you've seen it, you know. Interesting. You know what I'm talking about. So, crazy. That's really crazy. Yes. So, so yeah, that is um, some of the little legend behind Excalibur and King Arthur. Um, yeah, there's there's like a vast library of stuff on King Arthur, but that's a little snippet. Yeah. Um, I really did not know like anything <laughs> before this. That's really so, crazy. It was cool to look into it, but see, Savannah, and so now this is where we're gonna, you know slide into a little you know we like movies i taylor like movies around here and this is why i'm gonna need you to get back into marvel movies savannah because this is not a spoiler well it is but it's been out for so long so it's honestly your fault um in eternals um it is you know it's made apparent that excalibur is found and it's going to be like a really big part of the next like phase. okay, I thought I saw Eternals. Oh well, yeah, it's at the um, yes, yeah, at the very end. Um, you know, maybe we'll discuss after, just so we don't give too many. Okay, this one yeah, Harry Styles sure. in it at the end. Yes, I did see. Okay, it. I did see. It. So it's yeah. like the last clip, like yeah. after the Harry Styles. We'll discuss after. Okay, yeah. I do kind of remember that now that you're saying that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 And did, like somebody okay. is like the great 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 grandson of um. King Arthur, and that's how he has the uh, Excalibur. Yeah. Mm. I know. So, you know, any Marvel fans out there who like that story, you know, okay, they're going to so intertwine now, soon. So now I'm just wondering, like, see, I know, I know we're, like, getting so off topic. No, but, like, when, <laughs> when does this movie come out? Well, so, like, <laughs> Eternals 2, I, you yeah. know, I don't, I think I'm going to guess, like, 2025. Oh. Or tw- maybe late 2024. They're filming it now. Okay. Like, sorry to upset you. Harry Styles. <laughs> you like got me excited. It. You got me excited again. And then. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm then, sorry. I don't know. Now you're like, oh, it's not out yet. No. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I mean, it's not even close, but. Yeah. No, okay. but that was a really fun story. Love Excalibur. I, you know, why why not go to the lake? Like, would should we go try to find it? I'm a little scared of this hand. See, I, I'm going to have to do a little bit of digging to see what lake exactly it is. Because it just kept saying magical lake. Like, it wasn't saying where. <laughs> like, I'm no guessing, general area? Just... I'm guessing in Britain. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, we're narrowing it down just a little bit, you know. Wow. Okay, well, you know. Further research to be done on that. Because that's something I'm trying to see in my life. Maybe. <laughs> Depending. On the yeah. quality of the lake is nice or not. Mm-hmm, but, mm-hmm. so, you know, you, we had a little bit of the lady of the lake in your story. My story today is also of a lady, but it's the lady in purple. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, okay. Um, so, the reason why I chose this story, Savannah, well, the name, for one. Because, um, you know, love purple. Um, But for two, you are soon to be taking a trip to Salt Lake City, Utah. So I was like, what if I can find this spooky little fun thing for her to do there? Possibly, you know, if she has time. Yes. And so I did. I surely did. So today I am taking us to Salt Lake City, Utah, USA. Um, Oh, and also why the story is perfect for us. um, If you didn't know, fun fact, um, me and Savannah went to college together and for like half of college, we both dyed our hair purple and yes. called ourselves the purple hair twins. We did, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> so I was like, Lady in Purple, you're going to Salt Lake. Like, mm-hmm, gotta do the mm-hmm. Lady in Purple. <laughs> so, yeah. Story perfect for us. So let's get right on into it, shall yes, we? Yes, I'm excited to learn more about. Like, I honestly need to add more to my salt lake city um you know knowledge because i don't really know anything yeah. about it well i I'm, know <laughs> there's only one place i'm gonna tell you about today oh but okay i know a lot well, of information about it so yeah i mean that'll be fine um i like the main thing i feel like i know about that area or maybe just utah in general is that they do those like dirty sodas yeah i'm so jealous that you're gonna that's get pretty one. much it <laughs> I'm so jealous because, like, that, it just looks so good. Like, I know I can make it myself, but it's just not the same. I want to drive through. 
Yes, I know. Oh, they look so good. I can't wait for like in a couple months, or whenever, when you come back and you like rate, rate the um little sodas for us. I know. I I, I hope I can get a chance to go. No, you one, have but... no choice. <laughs> okay, you're right. You're right. That's like you have got to, even if you have to door dash it. Honestly, mm-hmm, <laughs> I'm sure mm-hmm. you can. But, anyways, so back to the lady in purple. Um, we'll get we'll get specifically to her in just a minute. But first, let's talk about the place that she has seen. So, in Salt Lake City, there's this place called the Rio Grande Depot, and it's an old train station. So, it used to be a train station, but today it's a historical landmark kind of museum type deal. Um, so, the depot was first opened in 1910, so it's just a little over 100 years old, and the location has been a site to... So many unexplained events over the years um, that the city actually hired an, a ghost investigation crew to come in and look at it. What? <laughs> yeah, they were like, That's okay, crazy. there's a lot going on here. So, you know, let's see. Let's see if we can get it figured out. Yeah. So, you know, you know, it's pretty serious if a city makes a decision to do that. Um so, yeah, I've like never heard of that. <laughs> I know, me neither. <laughs> um, just a bunch of ghost believers, I guess, you know, in Utah, I don't know, maybe. So reports um, were first starting to come in right after the station closed in 1947 of Ghost. So interesting. Um, and so even though it was closed, there were some people still working there, you know, like finishing up, you know, before... It shuts down as a full company, so, like, that mostly it was security guards there all the time, just making sure, like, things weren't weren't getting stolen or anything. And the security guards reported hearing so many footsteps, like, specifically on the upper balcony, um, heavy breathing, and they claimed to see shadowy apparitions, like, throughout the whole place. Okay, I don't, I don't like the heavy breathing. Mm-mm. That's the one I hate the most. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Also, I always thought like maybe I could be a security guard because they make a lot of money to kind of just sit there and do kind of nothing. But like in this situation, if you were like, it's kind of scary. <laughs> like in most of these places, they're yes. like you have to be a security guard at night. Yes, exactly. Ooh, and like if something scary was happening, it would be very scary. But then also, what if you have the experience like Ben Stiller? In Night of the Museum. <laughs> yeah, see, there's that too. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I've thought, about, I've thought about security jobs too, but then it's just like, <laughs> I know, I know like night guards and stuff, they always say that like nothing even happens at exactly. night, but what about the time that does? And it's like, right. what do you even do? Yeah, and if we're going like, to be you're honest. you're the security guard. What do you, exactly. do you call? Like, it's on, it's on me. I'm the Ghostbuster. Yeah. <laughs> like exactly you gotta call it's me and if it was honestly gonna happen to anybody you know it would happen to me yeah so (laughs) i don't know about that but anyways so other than the security guards stories of just you know the breathing and the footsteps and stuff the most well-known spirit the lady in purple um as i said she's the one that's seen the most here at the rio grande depot and she is the ghost allegedly of this young woman who was wearing a long purple dress. So that's why she's called the purple lady or the lady in purple. Um, legend says that she died in a really horribly tragic accident at the depot. Okay. So if you remember, this is a train station, right? So the, and we don't know this woman's name. Nobody's ever been able to figure it out. So that's kind of sad, but so I'll just refer to her as the lady in purple. Um, So she was recently engaged to her lover and they were taking this train to travel somewhere. And since we don't know who she is, we don't really know where they were planning on going either. But Mm -hmm. they were definitely planning on making a trip and they were waiting for their train to get there. And tragically, they got into a really big argument out on out waiting for their train. And uh, the woman got so mad, you know, the lady purple. That she took off her engagement ring and threw it down on the tracks. Oh, wow. Now, girl, that's a little dramatic. That was probably very expensive. (sighs) Like, you you didn't have to throw it on the tracks, you know. 
to yeah you maybe could like off through to it the like side. on the grass I don't yeah know. yeah yeah but... like off to the side where it's like okay you're having this dramatic moment yeah we get it but it's like so you can go back and get it exactly later. exactly <laughs> you know but the second that she you know threw it she was like wow like i'm really dumb so she runs jumps no. down onto the train tracks to get it and tragically was struck and killed by an oncoming train so this story was first recorded like wrote down from a server that had worked at the depot so that's how we know like the story of what happened even though like they don't know who she was um yeah and so that story started getting told around the 1980s and some people say that they see her spirit if it's not just like walking around like the train tracks or like the train area outside it is also very common in the women's restroom which is very interesting to me um yeah so but no matter where she is seen everybody always either says she looks either really angry or really unhappy so (laughs) well that's not good (laughs) not good not good at all for her Mm -hmm. (laughs) um so the local news station did an interview in 2017 um with the rio grande um manager um colleen murphy and she said that she had personally seen some lights come on at night, like, in a locked room that she was, like, cleaning up around, you know. And these lights just automatically come on. She's in a locked room. And um, nobody was in the room with her. So that freaked her out. So, you know, she finishes up, leaves, walking down the stairs, gets to the bottom of the stairwell, and the lights turn off. And she's standing right beside the, like, switch. And nobody's there for her. Oh, no. Um, I would be so scared. And she said, so this ended up happening, like, a bunch of other times, like, where the lights would just either turn on or turn off, like, wherever she was just randomly. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's scary. Could it be bad wiring? Maybe. Could it be a ghost? Maybe. Either way, I don't like it. I don't like it either. <laughs> Ugh. No. Um, so Colleen also said, now this is worse. Now, with if it was just the lights, I'd be like, mm, maybe it's the... Maybe it's the wires, but with everything else, I don't know. She also said that she was locked out of the building on several occasions. Um, all of them when she knew she did not lock the door and she knew that she was the only person there. And it happened always either like mi- midnight, like really, really late or like early, early morning hours. Never in the daytime. She was never locked out in the daytime. And every single time she claimed that she had her keys on her. And then all of a sudden she was outside and all the doors were locked. It's always at the creepy times, you know? I know. I don't like that at all. Oh, um, but worst of all, in my opinion, she said that multiple workers and guests have all came to her reporting to hear singing at night, pretty much only at night is when the singing happens, coming from the woman's restroom in the oh depot, even though the the bathroom was empty. Okay, what... Uh, what- are they singing? Um, I don't know if it's, like, a specific song. Okay. Other than, like, a hum. I'm just trying to, like, imagine what <laughs> they're hearing. It's like... There's so many songs I could sing Are right they now. singing, it's like, like, it's a party in sugar. the USA. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. No. I don't yeah. know. See, it could be that one. Could be Watermelon Sugar. Could exactly. Be... <laughs> I feel like it might be something along the lines of, like, 1920s music. So, maybe... Ooh. Wait, what about um, If I Die Young? Oh, no. <laughs> that's so sad. You know, that's what I used to sing. Okay, I just remembered that because um, she came out with a part two to that song. Uh, yes, she did. In fact, go stream it. I haven't actually yeah. listened to it yet. Oh, I did. It's, it's I pretty good. To. I really need to. Um, where, okay. So not only is she singing in the restroom, but she's also... Making herself be seen to guests. And so people will go into the bathroom, see a woman, and she's arguing. But not arguing with anybody. She's just, like, screaming, like, standing there screaming, yelling, arguing at absolutely nothing. And so, obviously, you know, they, people, guests, run out of there because they're like, this woman, you know, I don't want her to, like, attack or start yelling at me like that. And so that's been reported a bunch of times, too. So, like, her ghost is definitely still, like, stuck 
from like the day she died like you know that's what i feel at least like she's angry in an argument with her like fiance and you know it just keeps happening over yeah. and over see and that really sucks to be like stuck in such a bad time in your life you know? know it's really sad it's really 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 sad so that's lady in purple um, but there are also reports of, like, some other ghosts in the depot, which is crazy. This place is just kind of popping. Um, there's one that they don't know the name of, but it's apparently a man, and he haunts the lobby. And even though they don't know his name, they think it's actually the ghost of the old station master. It's, like, oh, the train, okay. like, the lead train guy. Um, so, yeah, a man will be seen in the lobby and then, like, suddenly disappear. But he looks like he works there, but, like, with, like, really old clothes and stuff. And then people have also heard a man's voice talking, even though, like, nobody's in there. And sometimes they even say, like, a man's voice talking with, like, 1920s music playing in the background, even though no music is playing. Oh, wow. And I'm like, this kind of, this place, honestly, it don't sound that scary to me. And if I was able to, like, go back in time like that, that's kind of cool. You know? Yeah. Like, you're I mean, hearing, is- like, sounds of, like possibly the olden days like that's kind of crazy mm-hmm. to think about if it's true anyway um so earlier i mentioned that the city hired a paranormal team to come investigate the depot right remember this fact um mm-hmm. so they used some pretty typical paranormal devices when they did it you know the you know they recorded regularly cameras all that stuff and then they brought the ovulus, or I think they called it something different, but pretty much the same, like, concept. Like, this machine that will, like, use radio waves and other things to, like, make it say random words at different times. And allegedly, like, the ghost is supposed to be able to control it and, like, talk and speak through this machine. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. In my personal opinion, I've worked with these machines, and I don't really know if I trust them all that much. You know, I mean, I I trust them, but, like, are they that reliable? I don't know. Yeah. At the same time, though, I've heard some pretty crazy answers. I'm like, what are the odds, you know, that they would say that at that time? So, you know, take it with a grain of salt, I suppose. But during the investigation, the team asked how many spirits um, were in there. And without hesitation, it gave the number seven. Seven? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So we knew about the Lady in Purple. We knew about the, like, lobby guy. But, like, who's the other five? I guess maybe the people who were, like, walking around, like, whispering into the Mm. um, security guard's ears. Ew. Ew, I don't know. I don't like it. I don't like it. Or maybe it's just them, but they're like, let's just freak them out. (laughs) Right. That's true. That's true. Oh, also, I, like, kind of wonder what if they're, what if they're, like, counting the people in the room right then and there? Oh, uh, yeah. You know? Yeah, know. could be. Could be. Um, the, okay, so this paranormal team found that the most active floor while they were there was the basement, um, of course. Um, if you've listened to this podcast before, you know I hate a basement. Very much so. Um... <laughs> They said that as soon as they stepped down into the basement, the ovulus said devil and screw living. Oh, my. Oh, my God. (laughs) Um, And had I been on that investigation team and that's the first thing I heard when I stepped into the basement, your girl would not be in the basement anymore. (laughs) I'm not even I'm not even kidding. Like, I don't even but I just told y'all I don't even believe in that machine like that. But I would run the other way. (laughs) Yeah. Um, That's scary. So, you know, they continue, and apparently it keeps answering their questions, like, all night long. Like, all night long. I could have read you the whole thing, but we would have been here for years and years. So, nothing, in my opinion, that was too, like, really hard evidence for me to believe. To believe or not believe. So, you know. Um, Let's see here. So, yeah, that was pretty much all they got out of the investigation. Um, or just some of, like, the answers off the ovulus. Um, nothing else really happened too much that night. Which, you know, sometimes that's how it goes. Sometimes the ghosties, they don't want to come out and play. You know? I don't know. And also sometimes ghosties, you know, maybe they just want to mess with the people that they're used to seeing. Like, you know, the workers and stuff. So. Mm-hmm. 
True. I don't know, but the team did say, even though they didn't have much evidence, they all believe that the place was very haunted, but, like, that the, like, spirits weren't, like, evil or anything. They were, you know, just seemed to be stuck there at this depot. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. So, overall, you know, I would say this place, I do believe it's haunted. I really do. There's so many stories. Like, I didn't even get into half of them just because they're all the same story, just from different people. Um, but yeah, I, if I was going to Salt Lake, Utah, I would go see this place. First of all, it seems cool. Just in general, like a little railroad museum seems fun. And the fact that you might get to see a lady in purple, nah, that's pretty cool too. I mean, she yeah, might be I mean, like screaming at you, but it's still cool. Yeah. It does. It does sound really cool. I think I'm going to, I'm going to try to go to this. Yeah. Oh yeah. Nice. We'll see it. But yeah, that's the legend of the lady in purple slash wow. kind of slash the Rio Grande depot. Yeah, like the whole thing. The whole place. There's like other, some other ghosties there. I can't too. leave the other ghosties out of this, but you know. You know what's crazy is like, I mean, I guess not crazy, but they like, there's usually a woman in white a lot of the time, but I've never heard of a lady in purple. I know, me purple. neither. And I'm like, I love that for her. Also, that probably means that she was very rich. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Because purple is like the hardest color to make. Oh my God. Imagine that diamond ring. It that's probably costs so saying. much. That's why she dove down there. That's exactly why she dove down there. That's that's what I'm saying. Like you knew she had to be rich. I can I can really just picture the whole thing in my head. The whole scene going down. It's really awful. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Really tragic. But definitely go check out our Instagram to see pictures from our stories this week. Mm-hmm. Um and rate and review us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Yes, yes, yes. But other than that, I don't really have anything else. What about you, Savannah? Yeah, I think I think we'll wrap it up. All right. Well, I guess we will. See you guys next week. Cue the music. <laughs>